Am I wrong for telling my dad that if he chooses to go to my stepbrother's graduation, then he better forget about me? I, 18 female, am an only child and my parents divorced when I was 8. My dad remarried when I was 12 and for a while everything was fine. But after a few years of living there with them, I started to notice that my dad preferred my stepbrother. They did more things together and he started to ditch me to go to his games, his plays, his tournaments, etc. For every 10 things I invited him to, he only attended 1 to 2. His wife always gave excuses. Oh, my son is younger than you. They are really close. His dad is not involved in his life and told me that at least I was lucky enough to have a dad with me and specifically one who was willing to share his love. When I was 13, my mother applied for sole custody in one. Only then did I see my dad being hurt that I was being taken away. I started to spend time with my dad, but only if he picked me up to do it. He still missed most of my things and I've always resented him and his family for it. Since this is my last year, I had a lot of significant activities. I had my last debate, my last volleyball game, I won best essay in my class, got into best 20 alumni, and finally went to pick my prom dress. Some, if not all of these things he missed because he was working or attending something regarding his family and I can't have it anymore. My my graduation is December 15th, the same as my stepbrother's elementary school, and when I told my dad, he said that he would see if he could make it, which meant he wouldn't, so I came clear. I said that while graduating elementary school is nice, I'm graduating high school and I'm on my way to university, so he can't really compare those things, and if he chooses my stepbrother's graduation, he better forget about me. His wife flipped and told me that I was taking my stepbrother's dad away from a big day and I was being a spoiled brat. I told her that I couldn't be a spoiled brat if I was being ignored the whole time and that I wasn't talking to her. My my dad looked shocked, so I said that he could be there for once in his life or he could miss me forever and left. But now that I've cooled off, I started to feel bad. I love my dad to pieces and I just want him to be there for me too and I surely don't want to hurt my stepbrother. I was wondering if I was being an asshole for acting how I did because he's paying half of my college fund and I gave him an ultimatum. Plus, my dad is not prone to confrontation while my mother and I are. Am I the asshole for putting my brother on speaker and letting his fiance hear about what he's been asking me to do? Content, I, 23 male, and what people will call tech savvy. I know like a bunch of stuff about computer programming and mobile software, but seriously, I consider myself good since plenty of people come to me for help. For free of course so lately my brother 27 male has been asking me to install a tracking app on his fiance's iphone like he had brought it to me twice and i refused after he tried to pressure me to do it he even offered money but i refused because i felt it was kind of wrong and also i only help out people who only want to be helped and like don't have bad intentions i refused because his fiance doesn't deserve this i thought he had dropped it after i told him that if he asked me again i'd tell her well a couple of days ago he calls me up while i was at my parents house his fiance happened to be there too i answer the phone and he brings up the tracking app again. I put him on speaker and be like, sorry, come again. And he says, it's about the tracking app. I want it on my fiance's phone. I need you to do it tonight when I stop by with her phone. He proceeds on on how he could no longer lie about her phone being missing when he hides it and brings it to me. Basically telling me this was the last chance he's got to put the app on there. My parents go silent, but his fiance looks shocked, then goes off on him, and then he hangs up and she grabs her purse and rushes out. My parents lash out on me, asking me what the heck I had done. I tell them he refused to get off my back after I warned him. They cuss at me saying I just caused a huge problem between my brother and his fiance and stuff like that. Later my brother was calling non-stop and when I gave no response, he sent a nasty text calling me names and stuff, then saying that it might have just compromised his entire relationship. I haven't seen nor heard from my family or him since then. I feel terrible, not gonna lie, and like I really messed up by putting a private conversation on speaker. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for asking my 27 male, unemployed girlfriend, 24 female, to get a job? Half a year ago, my girlfriend got me a great job in a new career path we both decided to take. It normally takes newbies two plus years to get this kind of job she got me. The job was offered to her first and it's a family connection, but she gave it to me because she saw how stressed out I was about not being able to get a job. Instead, she accepted an unpaid internship that would have turned into a full-time position, but her boss treated her so poorly that it took a toll on her mental health. She ended up leaving after two months. I told her she could relax for a while before starting her studies again, if she ever wanted to, and I told her that she didn't even need a job because I could support both of us. She's given herself the duties of cooking us elaborate meals, cleaning, and doing all of the chores. She's gone on me presents to help make my job easier and makes me coffee throughout the day. I work from home. I am very grateful for everything she does. My job has been stressful since day one. I work 12 to 13 hour days and I work on weekends. I haven't been able to spend much time with my girlfriend. She claims to understand, but she is constantly upset that we don't hang out anymore. She told me that she knows it isn't my fault and isn't demanding more, but she's sad about it. We got into a huge fight the other day because she asked if that little time we spent together could be more meaningful. I felt like she was demanding more out of me. I have so little personal time as is, and I think she wanted me to allocate more of that to her. I admittedly 
usually say mean things when I'm angry, so I called her a selfish person and said that she only pretends to care about me but that everything she does is self-serving. Then I told her I felt trapped and smothered. I realized recently that my girlfriend being unemployed puts a lot of pressure on me. Even if I can't reduce my hours and I make enough for both of us, I want her to be able to support herself if something happened. I told her that this pressure makes me feel trapped. Then I said that having to worry about whether or not she's happy stresses me out more than I already am. I told her that I'm the unhappiest I've ever been in my life and that a large part of this is our relationship, but if she got a job, a lot of these feelings would go away. She said that she would find a job so I could stop feeling this way and the issue seemed resolved. But there have been a few times since then where I've walked into a room she's in and she's been visibly crying. When I ask her what's wrong, she says she doesn't want to talk about it because she doesn't want to stress me out more. I have a feeling it's about the fight we had the other day, but she won't talk to me about it. I don't think I said anything wrong by asking her to get a job. I was being honest about how I felt, but it clearly hurt her. So am I the asshole? Am I wrong for asking my mother-in-law to leave our wedding because her perfume was bothering me? I just got married to the love of my life. I've usually gotten along pretty well with my new in-laws. Usually my mother-in-law doesn't wear perfume or at least not any that I've been able to notice. My wife had her mother be her matron of honor, so she was standing with us up front. It was a small area, and with her right next to my wife, I was able to smell her perfume. Shortly after the ceremony started, I started to get watery eyes and sniffles. Our ceremony was supposed to only last 20 minutes max, so I thought I would just push through unless it got worse. It didn't get worse until after the ceremony when my new mother-in-law hugged me. Itchy eyes, itchy throat, and headache got added to the mix. My wife asked if I was alright, and I told her I think her mother's perfume was getting to me. We had someone go get some allergy medication. I took one, but it didn't do a whole lot, and I started to feel out of it. We get to the reception, and we started to do our group photos, and I couldn't do photos with my mother-in-law in them. I told my wife we needed to figure something out because my symptoms weren't letting up and I didn't want to be out of it from taking more meds for our reception or have to leave our own reception. My wife asked her mother to keep some distance between us to try to make it easier for me. It didn't really. That perfume followed her like a damn cloud. Then my wife asked her mom to try and wash wherever she dabbed her perfume, but mother-in-law said she hadn't dabbed it on. She spritzed herself so it was on her dress too. At that point, they said they were out of ideas and there wasn't anything we could do. I said there was one more thing and suggested that maybe mother-in-law leave to change her dress and then come back or even just go to a nearby thrift store or something and get any kind of clothes. I'd even pay for them. I asked mother-in-law to either please do do that or leave and we'd visit later with Kay because it was getting to the point that I would have to leave. My wife and mother-in-law objected to this because my wife wanted her mom there the whole time. I understand the day was big for my wife and she wanted her mother there and I wanted her there too but I wasn't able to enjoy my own wedding. I wound up sitting outside with some of my family and groomsmen. I started to feel better and when I did, my wife came out and asked if I'd be going back inside. I told her no so long as her mom was still there and hadn't changed. The night ended with my wife spending our wedding night at her parents' house. Am I the asshole for asking my mother-in-law to leave? Am I wrong for calling the police on my niece who stole my car? I, 46 female, live on a farm with my husband and two kids. My brother, Dwayne, 38, has a daughter. We'll call her Emma, 15. My brother and his wife have always been very quick to compliment me on the behavior of my children. Angela, my sister-in-law, confines in me about Emma's troubles. Emma is very reckless, shopless, drinks, has an older boyfriend, and gets into fights at school. She's also constantly suspended in and out of school. Over the summer, Emma had a run-in with the law and they were told that if she didn't straighten up her act that she would end up in prison. They were suggested and tried therapy, but Emma would never participate. Dwayne asked me if I would take Emma and teach her some responsibility. The arrangement was that I would take Emma for the final month of summer, enroll her in school here, and keep her for the first semester. If all went well, Emma was welcome to stay with us, otherwise other options would be explored those of which are unknown to me. Emma did not do well all through July. Her boyfriend drove over to visit her to my dismay. I tried to make him leave, but it caused some backlash, so I figured I would set visitation, then wean her time from him more and more. Then I caught her smoking one of those electronic cigarettes twice. She would never do any of the work asked, would talk back, steal food, break things, and would be rude to my children. All of that could be dealt with. I knew that when school came around, she needed to be more disciplined. So, one morning we got into an argument because I told her I was chaining up the fridge and that she better act right or else she'll be forced to scavenge for her food around the farm and cook it herself. If she doesn't want to contribute, she gets nothing the household has worked for. She was livid, throwing stuff, stomping her feet, making rude gestures. My son and I left to go tend to the animal's morning duties and told her that she better catch up to get some chicken tonight or start preparing to pick some vegetables for herself. After an hour of work, I sent my son back home to get me a change of pants due to a fall. He came back asking me if dad had taken my car. We quickly realized Emma had stolen my car. Not only that, but she did not have a license, only a permit. I did what any reasonable person would do in the situation and called the police. They found her two hours later and arrested her, saying she was going to be charged with a misdemeanor for driving without a license and I believe joyriding. They told me she steals our cars all the 
single time and always brings them back, which that would have been good information for me to know beforehand. My family is siding with them that calling the police when knowing she would be arrested was an a-hole move. Just to tack this on so I don't have to reiterate this to everyone who comments about the fridge bit. This was more or less an empty threat. If it came to it though, I can't say I would have totally rule-headed that out as crossing the line. 